بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفه وأكرمني بنور الفه اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزاء نعلمك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين uh, الحمد لله we have توفيق to continue our study of 40 hadith and today inshallah we want to finish the hadith about trials the next chapter is about an issue that our ulama mentioned in the science of kalam and they talk about the prophets and the idea of isma that they should not commit sins or mistakes they also mention that they should be free from any uh, quality that would be disliked by people to the extent that they would run away from them. They would not be uh, you know, happy to be close to them. Uh, we say in Arabic, uh, those qualities which are munafira, makes people run away makes people hate them for example Allama uh, Majlisi Rahmatullah Alayhi and Muhaqqiq Tusi Khaja Nasiruddin Tusi mentioned points that uh, Imam Khomeini wants to comment on them he says Allama Majlisi says that in the hadith about ibtila ul anbiya about the trials of the prophets with sunni and shia all have narrated it is said that anbiya can become ill physically they can become ill and not only they can become ill and be tried with their health actually anbiya are more expected to suffer and one aspect of the suffering is to suffer in their body because this would raise their rank and also when anbiya become ill or have some problems it would then stop people thinking of them as uh, you know god or a kind of deity that uh, may some people would develop if they see they are perfect in every aspect they may forget that they are human beings that sometimes become ill sometimes become hungry sometimes you know they have problems so this is what Allah Majlisi has said but Khaja Nasiruddin Tusi in Tajrit says the prophets should be free from anything which causes tanafur means people run away people don't like it and he says uh, there are some types of disease that people keep away from those who have that disease Imam Khomeini says although even such disease or any disease would not contradict the high position of the prophets because nothing about the body can affect and can conflict with their spiritual and you know very high position that they have but because there are some people who are not that educated and understanding to realize that even a man of God can become ill and his illness can cause you know bad you know uh, situation to the body so because not everyone can understand that then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to meet the purpose of appointing them as prophets keeps them away from such things so in other words logically 
no one should think if someone has a bad looking disease for example the skin then that person cannot be high in spirituality no one should think like that but because there are some people who is who find it very hard or maybe impossible for them to believe in someone who is a man of God and sent, uh, received revelation and still has bad kinds of disease so in order to leave no chance for them to question the legitimacy of the prophet Allah keeps the prophets free from such problems then he mentions that in some hadith we find that prophet Ayyub Allah Nabi Nawali Wa Salam job uh, when he became ill he actually uh, started looking in a bad way I could do some of this there were for example uh, worms in his flesh and his skin was damaged in a very badly so people didn't like and he was smelling badly so you know, people didn't want to look at him or be close to him I could do some of this but on the other hand, we have hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam quoting his father Imam Baqir that rejects these kind of sayings. For example, hadith says, "Inna ayyub ubtulia sab'a sanin min ghayra dhammin." He was tested with difficulties and calamities for seven years without committing any sin, so it was not a punishment. Because some people, you know, used to tell him that if uh, you suffer, it's because you have committed sins. The prophets don't commit sins. Why? Because the prophets are immaculate, purified. They don't commit sins. Their heart would not, you know, be affected badly. Uh, and they don't come major or minor sin and then hadith says in ayyub min bih. prophet ayyub because of all the problems that he had still his smell didn't become bad his image was not looking ugly and it was not that you know for example blood and you know uh, dirty for example liquid from the injuries were infected you know liquid was coming out or for example people found him not uh, pleasant it was not that anyone who saw him found him to be not clean no one who witnessed him and looked at him felt afraid and frightened and no part of uh, no uh, war uh, w w became uh, spread in his body so this hadith rejects those reports that say that his body was in a very bad condition which may be taken as contradicting what muhaqqiq tusi khadinasiddin tusi says in tajrid that and Bia should be free from such illnesses. The next chapter is about the fact that dunya, this world, is not suitable for reward and punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can give reward to someone who has done something good for you to some extent, but if someone has, for example, saved the lives of many people, how can you reward him? But this is especially true about divine reward. Even we human beings cannot reward if something is just done for us, but let alone uh, someone who has done something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has offered his money, his life, his reputation, has worked very hard, has saved many people. How can you reward him in dunya? This dunya is not the abode of reward and it's not complete and perfect reward and no for punishment it means the real punishment cannot happen in this world in dunya everything is mixed you cannot have 
pure pleasure. Actually, you cannot also have pure pain. So for those that you want to reward them, there is no such a thing as pure pleasure in dunya. Many times pleasure is lack of just pain. And also for those who want to be punished, you want to punish them, there is no pure pain here. Most of the pains here, almost all, they are mixed with some kind of pleasure. It's not 100% pleasure, not, not also 100% pain. It's mixed. Degrees can be different, more pleasure than pain, or more pain than pleasure, or equal, but uh, normally there is uh, no case that it is purely pleasing or purely, for example, punishing. Then he also says another thing is that in dunya you should not expect people to be quickly uh, rewarded or punished. Sometimes it takes time, especially when it comes to punishment. Don't expect that when someone says something wrong, for example, if someone is lying or someone is doing you know, something wrong or you know, doing dole, for example, in particular, don't expect that immediately that person should be punished. No, this dunya is for test and people should be given time. Maybe that person repents later, maybe that person compensates, maybe that person becomes reward. So we should not uh, quickly close the case. We have to let it carry on and give the person opportunity to reflect on their behavior. Maybe they decide to stop, maybe they start to continue, and so on and so forth. So this is very important that we realize that this world is not the ultimate abode for us. It's not where we get the reward and punishment completely. And if also someone does something bad, maybe actually not only he is not quickly punished, maybe in some cases when he was warned and warned, he insisted, maybe actually when he does something bad, he would be receiving something good from dunya. This is estedraj, that sometimes people get something from dunya because they have not been looking after themselves, they didn't repair the damage they have caused. It's like, as I said last week, it's a fire in a floor. If you don't extinguish it, it can go to other floors. So their problem can increase. Another thing is that uh, the intensity of the calamities and trials also depends on the intensity of understanding. People who are more understanding, more intelligent, more intellectual, they would uh, suffer more, especially with respect to the things which are spiritual and intellectual and mental. So Imam Khomeini says, Harche edrakat kamil tar va ruhaniyat qavi ruhaniyat qavi tar bashad baliyat bishtar va edrak namulayimat afsun gardad. The more complete, the more perfect the understanding and perceptions become, the more spiritual someone becomes, the more calamities would have he or she and would have also more understanding of the problems. And he says, Rasulullah is quoted as saying, Ma mithla ma No prophet has been annoyed like me. And he says one interpretation of this is that because Rasulullah had more understanding and better understanding of glory and beauty and greatness of God and his position and what he deserves, so for him, seeing people sinning was very, very painful and hurting him a lot. In general, those who are closer to Allah's mercy and love, when they see people going astray, when they see people have problems, they are more disturbed and they are more uh, in pain. Of course, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the one that had greatest understanding and therefore greatest uh, pain when he was hurt and annoyed more than any other prophet. Okay, alhamdulillah, we finished hadith number 15 and inshallah next session we will talk about hadith number 
16. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين.